Okay. We have some abilities, maybe language, reasoning, logic, thinking, critical thinking. So many areas of brain work for various cognitive development of our brain. Right? Cognition is, what is cognition? Cognize, we say. That you are able to know about it. See, when I say perception, conception, before that sensation. Sensation, perception, then conception. What is sensation? All of you are able to see this, right? All of you are able to see this. Yes? Did you see? Now, how many of you have perceived it? What did I show? All the voices are not coming. Some of them did not. They saw it. They have not perceived it. They have not recognized it. Right? I will give a simple example to you. When you climb into the bus, or somewhere you are going, right? When you climb into the bus, every day same bus, same time. So many bus mates will be there. Right? But you, you will recognize them. Every day you see them. But you don't perceive them. If your friend is there, in a seat, sitting there, immediately you go and talk to them and you recognize them and you perceive them. Then also you will know about him. That is cognizing. Right? So sensations, perceptions and conceptions. So conceptions will not happen without sensations and perceptions. But all sensations are not perceptions. All perceptions are not conceptualization. Not possible. So unless you make a Effort to conceptualize, these senses will not become perceptions, perceptions will not become conceptions. So this is the process of cognition that happened in our brain. We see, right? You see and an image is formed in the brain and this will have a linkage to our different parts of the brain. Then you will recognize it and then store in the memory. Then you will develop the our cognitive development will happen. So, day by day you will learn more and more things and in your memory traces these all will get stored as the information and further when you use it, it becomes knowledge. When you apply it, it becomes wisdom. Okay? Information stored in the memory traces. It becomes knowledge when you know and use it. When you apply it, it becomes wisdom. Right? Data, bits and pieces of Information, when it is in the scattered bits and pieces, it is the data. Then when it is having some kind of meaningful way of presentation, it becomes information. When it serves some purpose, it becomes knowledge. When it is applied for a right cause, it becomes wisdom. So like that, this whole lot will happen in our cognitive process. The logic, reason, all this through that you will establish whether whatever you are doing right or wrong, this discrimination, all these are capabilities and abilities of our cognitive development. So we have to give a lot of exercises, experiences, exposure, hands-on experiences for children so that their cognitive development will happen within the right time. Especially all of you know in the brain development theory, a lot of literature is coming up for just for the sake of understanding. 90% of our children's brain will develop by the age of 5 years. So before 5, this 90% brain gets developed. So we have to be very careful in development of our physical brain. Then automatically all these things will happen. So that's a very stimulating period. So we need to have a lot of stimuli. Similarly, in our classroom also, we should stimulate, motivate, and provide a lot of stimulus in the classroom. And also we call it as stimulus variation. What is stimulus variation? Though I am standing continuously here, I am standing continuously here, but I am giving different kinds of stimuli. What are the stimuli I have given all through last one and a half hour? I am seeing, I am rotating my head, I am asking questions, right? I am moving from here, this space is long, so I am not moving, otherwise go to two, podium, podium to go, and color mic, if it is there, I would have gone around your classroom. I have to stick for this mic here, right? So, lot of stimulation. You show, you question, you operate the board. These are all different stimuli. Right? So, these stimuli, why we need lot of stimuli in teaching? Why we need different varieties of stimuli in teaching? These kind of questions will come. Okay. Huh. To make them attentive and more so, 
the span of attention for any human being is not more than 5 to 10 minutes, not more than that. For one stimuli, it is not that only 5 to 10 minutes you will have span of attention. For each individual stimuli, your span of attention will be less. So if you change the stimuli, automatically your attention will be again diverted back to the attention. So to drive the attention of the students, to sustain the curiosity and interest of the students, <coughs> teachers should use variety of learning in the classroom, strategies, things, materials, models, questions, ask questions, then giving some things, writing some time on the board, walking, talking, so many stimuli are providing in the classroom. Maybe 100 stimuli I might have provided to you by the time we complete one, one and a half hour session. So every time when I change my stimuli, you tend to pay attention to my change in stimuli. Otherwise, if I stand like this, go on talking like this, then I think almost 90% will sleep in the classroom. Already some of them are sleeping. This is post-lunch fever, I can't help for that. But that also you can avoid. Small tip from yoga and tell you, none of you will sleep in the post-lunch and the What is that tip? Please. Straight, keep your neck and spine straight. Don't take any support on the table or chair. Then you will not sleep. Okay? So don't embarrass the teachers. Don't embarrass yourself by sleeping in the class. Right? So be attentive. This attention requires a lot of stimuli, variety of stimuli. So like that you have so many methods, so many strategies, so many learning styles. Case study, role play, simulation. All this you know, right? What is simulation? What is simulation? What is simulation? Hmm? What is simulation? Have you heard word prototype? Prototype? What is prototype? What is a model? What is a model? Can I show Vulcana here? Can I show Vulcana here in the classroom? What should I do? Bring a simulator? Create a simulation here. You, you put some chemical and as if there is Vulcan eruption happening, I should show. Right? So today we have, what is the technological development happened in this kind of thing? Anybody can tell me? Advanced to that? Augment every reality. Virtual is okay. You are creating a virtual world. This is not in the real time. Virtual reality is not in the real time. Augmentative reality? It happens in the real time. I can see the elephant here in the real time because of the software that they have developed, augmented reality, lot of teaching material is being prepared for children these days by using this technology. Okay. So that will create, if it happens in the real time, that is the basic difference between virtual reality and augmented reality. It will happen in the real time. That is the difference between these two, right? So then what else is, can be discussed? Panel discussions, all that you know, you must have exposed to so many panel discussions. You never understand why this panel discussion, right? So what is the purpose of panel discussion? Why panel discussion is better than single person speaking in the session? There may be a seminar. You will have number of people speaking individually, but there will be some panel discussions. Why panel discussion? Sir, what is? Yeah. Yeah. Very, very, very nice. Different perspectives, different you know viewpoints can be seen on the same theme on a topic, so that we can invite expertise opinions of various people on the same issue and it will be interesting for us also and we can also interact with the panelists and ask them clarifications and other things. Right? So it's really good. With the panel discussion, enriched discussions will happen, enriched learning will happen, variety will be there and we will be able to connect to many people and know many people's views on the same theme. Right. Anything else? Anything else? Group discussion you Yes, brainstorming you. What is brainstorming? You got brainstorm today? All of us coming together to find a solution to a problem. Who use it normally? Brainstorm. Mostly in industry they use frequently to find innovative ideas to generate new products, isn't it? You take market survey. And you wanted to create new things. Every day you see Colgate, new Colgate, charcoal Colgate, Nimbu Colgate, whatever they want. They will put some new 
innovative idea there so that they can sell it for some more time. So, with a lime soap, without lime soap. I don't know what all they do, but these are all so many innovative ideas. How do you get these innovative ideas? Coolly you think for an hour together, hours together, days together, will you get the ideas? What is Tom? What is a storm? Just take little meaning, then you will understand. You don't need to worry and buy hard. Not evaluation. These are spontaneity. You know? Spontaneous ideas will come like a fountain from the mind. When you storm the wind, my time is over. I, I will be with them. I have told them eight minutes before, my time is over. I am winding up. Thank you very much for making me part of your discussion. Anything you have, you can ask me. Otherwise, we can call it a day. Huh? This, one, this is there in one of the book in the internet. The soft whole book I will pass on. Okay? Here's some lessons. I will just send you to, to me. You can share with everybody. If somebody wanted to talk, I will use it here. Okay? Okay. The whole book got downloaded just for the sake of seeing what But I did not teach anything from the book. Very trivial thing.